वेलकम टू माई YouTube चैनल सेफ्टी गाइड लाइन्स आई एम फहीम आजम द टॉपिक फॉर दिस वीडियो इज़ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव इट इज़ वेरी स्पेशल एज इट इज रिलेटेड टू अब्रेसिव ब्लास्टिंग टूडे आई शैल ट्राई टू आंसर ऑन सम बेसिक क्वेश्चन अराइजेज फॉर अब्रेसिव और सैंड ब्लास्टिंग लेट्स मूव ऑन प्लीज डू वॉच इट थॉरली एंड टिल द एंड टू गेट बेनिफिट्स ऑफ दिस वीडियो वट डज अब्रेसिव ब्लास्टिंग मीन अब्रेसिव ब्लास्टिंग रेफर्स टू द ऑपरेशन ऑफ फोर्सिबली प्रोपेलिंग ए हाई प्रेशर स्ट्रीम ऑफ अब्रेसिव मटीरियल अगेंस्ट ए सर्फिस इन ऑर्डर टू स्मूथ ए रफ सर्फिस रफ एन ए स्मूथ सर्फिस शेप ए सर्फिस रिमूव सर्फिस कंटेमिनेंट्स वट इज एन अब्रेसिव ब्लास्टर यूज फॉर अब्रेसिव ब्लास्टिंग एंड टेल्स एक्सेलरेटिंग ए ग्रेट ऑफ सेंड साइज पार्टिकल्स विद कंप्रेस्ड एयर टू प्रोवाइड ए स्ट्रीम ऑफ हाई वेलॉसिटी पार्टिकल्स यूज टू क्लीन मेटल ऑब्जेक्ट सच एज स्टील स्ट्रक्चर्स or provide a texture to poured concrete <clears throat> so what is the difference between abrasive blasting and sand blasting abrasive blasting goes by many names such as sand blasting media blasting or grit blasting these names all refer to the same method of surface cleaning and preparation the only difference is the type of abrasive used to do the work <clears throat> hazards abrasive blasting operations can create high levels of dust and noise abrasive material and the surface being blasted may contain toxic materials for example lead paint silica that are hazardous to workers silica sand crystalline can cause silicosis lung cancer and breathing problems in exposed workers <clears throat> what appropriate pp is required for sand blasting clothing gloves and boots help further ensure the safety and comfort of the operator nylon blast suits such as RPB blast suit are lightweight durable and breathable and designed to protect from any abrasive material kick back while helping keep the operator cool <clears throat> common mistakes not using safety gear using the wrong media spraying head on not letting metal cool not preparing for a mess not preparing for noise not cleaning the airline what are the precautions for sand blasting sand blasting safety measures require that workers wear protective helmets clothing gloves safety footwear ear plugs protective eyewear and other osha recommended equipment provide workers with proper respiratory equipment respiratory protection is absolutely critical for sand blasting processes why is sand blasting forbidden now nowadays it's clear that exposure to respirable crystalline silica during sand blasting can cause a serious or even fatal respiratory disease called silicosis a scarring and hardening of the lungs in most countries it is now forbidden to use abrasive which contain more than 1% free silica injury to operator and others in the area when abrasive blasting in the air and blasting material come out at extremely high speed 
if the operator accidentally aims it at a person in the area they can experience severe injuries even if they are wearing breathing protection the velocity of the blasting material itself can cause severe skin and eye injuries it is also possible for the operator to hurt him or herself if they put the blasting wand down for example and then turn it back on accidentally it could blast their leg or foot which can cause a significant injury to avoid this type of problem the best thing you can do is instruct all abrasive blasting operators to treat the machine as if it were a firearm it should never be pointed in the direction of anyone or anything that you do not want it to fire at this will help ensure better abrasive blasting safety for everyone is sand blasting flammable as per the findings of the studies on flammability of abrasive blast sparks the two tests both determined that the sparks that can be created from abrasive blasting never generated ignition of the gases in either study suggesting that abrasive blast sparks mean and of them are not an ignition source <coughs> Here are some some general tips on abrasive blasting operations. Number one, in restricted areas, abrasive blasting is considered hot work. Number two, only qualified and certified individuals shall operate abrasive blasting and coating equipment. Number three, wear a high efficiency dust filter respirator approved by NIOSH when handling abrasive blasting media. That is a great. Number four, we are approved hearing protection in areas near abrasive blasting operations where noise levels exceed 85 decibel. Number five, we are an air supplied hood type CE supplied air respirator approved by NIOSH and additional personal protective equipment including coveralls and leather or neoprene gloves and apron. when performing abrasive blasting operations number 6 use only approved abrasive blasting materials do not use silica sand or combustible abrasive capable of forming explosive mixtures with air as abrasive blasting materials number 7 perform mechanically mechanical integrity testing that is wall thickness measurement on any in service pressure containing equipment that will undergo abrasive blasting number 8 do not perform abrasive blasting on tanks vessels that are receiving or discharging product number 9 never point an abrasive blasting nozzle at any person or part of your body number 10 place barricades and warning signs around the work area where abrasive blasting is taking place now some basic guidelines on equipments in number 1 inspect test use and maintain air compressors supplying breathing air as per the manufacturer's requirement number 2 include a niosh or equivalent organization approved particulate filter and water oil traps in the breathing air delivery system of abrasive blasting equipment Number three, oil lubricating air compressors that supply breathing air require continuous carbon monoxide monitoring with an audible alarm. Number four, replace breathing air filters as recommended by the manufacturer, but not less than every three months. Check and drain water oil traps daily. Number five, use compressed gas association grade D supplied air for the hoods. are aspirators and ensure the delivery system meets the manufacturers of specification number 6 test air compressors 
supplying breathing air quarterly using an independently approved third party testing facility to ensure that the air quality supplied by the compressor meets CGA grade D air quality requirements. Number 7. Electrically bond the nozzle hose blasting equipment that is blast spot and the material equipment being cleaned to dissipate static electric charge buildup. Number 8. Electrically ground the blast pot and material equipment being cleaned to prevent the buildup of static electricity. Number 9. Install a safety pin, wire and whip checks to prevent disengagement of all twist lock fittings. Number 10. Use a constant pressure handler deadman switch that will automatically shut off when pressure is released. Thank you for your abrasive encouragement for me not to be so quiet. However, I am really proud of it. Also, can you not be so loud? Also, thank you for watching my video. Do remember to subscribe my channel. Press the bell icon to receive notification regarding my further informative video clips. Like, comment and share my videos to encourage me and my team. Have a good time. See you in the next clip. Till then. Bye.